Blood Covenant, a V5 Saban story, is a production of Simulacra Studios. This podcast is intended for a mature audience and contains descriptions of violence, sexual activity, mental illness, body horror, and inhuman supernatural depravity. If you're not comfortable with what you hear, please feel free to skip ahead or stop listening. If you'd like to support the show, please visit patreon.com slash simulacra studios. Though honestly, I don't know why you fucking bother. We are on the streets of New York. Your pack, the Blood Covenant, has received an invitation to a private party. Now, this party is in the lobby of a high-rise condominium on the island of Manhattan called the Echelon. How is your pack getting to the party? I suppose it depends on how we travel around in general. Like, do we have a van? A pack van? I mean, I, I'm always good with walking. Uh, well, I probably have a car. I mean, I've got resources and in, in, in connections, so it's not hard. Okay. So, you guys roll up in Leon's car, and one by one, you get out of the car. Leon, describe your character for us, please. Well, the first thing, because he's obviously driving, he gets out, and the car itself sort of slightly shakes from the mammoth of a band that comes out. He is very big. We're talking over, well over six feet tall, and very thick of limb, very meaty hands. He is a Caucasian. He's actually got a big thing of hair that's slicked back, black hair slicked back. Though for all his size, he looks very pale and sickly, like there is something wrong with him, actively wrong with him. But he doesn't move. It doesn't seem to hinder him if you think he is ill. But he moves and sort of comes around the car and opens the door for Sister Paisley and the rest. So Sister Paisley is the next one to come out of the car. What does Sister Paisley look like? Sister Paisley is a lithe, kind of slightly athletic build with a little bit of a pear shape. Uh, And she's got blonde hair pulled back in a chignon and bright blue eyes and a nice little lip gloss on. Actually wears bright colors, like got a nice teal top and a below knee length black skirt. Okay. So the car door behind Leon and Paisley opens. Who is coming out the door? I imagine I'd probably ride with Paisley because that's my girl and we are squad. So after she gets out, I scoot out after her and Layla is like this tall, like biracial black girl with long red box braids. And she's probably wearing a lot of red tonight. She's like, we're going to go somewhere nice. I want to look nice. I want to be colorful. But colorful like my girl Paisley. So, yeah. We match. It's it's kind of important to me. <laughs> okay. So, the other two. Do the other two ride with the three of them? Or are you guys coming up in a different vehicle? I can drive, so we can come up in a different vehicle. Listen to a different kind of music. Oh, mine was a black Cadillac, by the way. I'm sorry, it just has to be a black Cadillac. Ours is a Geo Metro, suck it. (laughs) All right, so the Geo Metro comes up, and there are attendants who take your keys and start to move the car around, because parking in New York is a goddamn nightmare. But there are people who are handling this for you. So, who comes out of the driver's seat of Geo Metro? I guess I will. Um, Reggie is about 5'9". He actually has actively made himself look unnoticeable like you know just standard height standard eye color standard haircut like brown 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 kind of middleweight at this point so you know around 200 pounds and he is dressed in the minimum they would have allowed him to come in in terms of nice clothing (laughs) so probably a button-up and maybe like a jacket the final person comes out of the geo metro and what does Buck look like? Uh, so the most obvious thing about Buck immediately upon seeing him is that he is ridiculously Hollywood, L.A. good looking. Um, he has high cheekbones, an angular chin, deep set hazel eyes. Um, he's got long brown hair that is tied into a rawhide ponytail. Um, and he has freckles, these these 
vibrant brown freckles all over his face, and so it gives him an appearance of being young, uh, but his eyes sort of belie that, so he, he looks uh, he looks like a model. Uh, the second thing that's obvious about him is that he either doesn't know it or doesn't care. Um, he is wearing a ratty band t-shirt, torn up jeans, um, one boot that is in that the sole seems to be coming off of. Uh, he looks like a really, really beautiful homeless guy. I see. So, it is November 1998 on the streets of New York. It's cold, but as of yet, there has not been a drop of precipitation in the city. So it's a very dry, cold winter. The street outside of the Echelon condominium high-rise is filled with people. It looks like they are sending away more people than they're letting in. The attendant who takes your keys surreptitiously lets you, Leon, know about the side entrance where the actual members of the party are supposed to go to. Understood. He looks to everyone assembled outside. He locks eyes with every single person and says, this way. Okay, so you go around the side of the building. It's more of a maintenance entrance for than the actual people who would normally be coming in and out of the building, but it seems to have more security on it. You know, any partygoers, any mortal partygoers who wander their way around the building are quickly, roughly removed from this area. But the five of you are let by with, without a word. Question. Who are we here to meet, and do I know them? You are here at the invitation of one of the local bishops. It is the Bishop of Spirituality by the name of Sanya. You kind of have at least an inkling about what this is all about. When we finally get to the alleyway, where we're much more obscured from people, he looks over to Reggie and says, Couldn't have wore a suit? You didn't stop me. Well, we're going to be meeting a bishop, and uh, I don't want anyone giving them the false impression of our situation. This is important. It's fine. Like, from a distance, he looks like he did it on purpose. Dress for... Dress to impress next time. Uh, he kind of looks directly at the priest and says, What, well, you, ain't, you ain't impressed with my choice of uh, evening attire? Oh, well, you look handsome as always, but, you know, maybe maybe a nice little suit jacket over the band tee. Though, but could wear a trash bag and still look lovely. Oh, sorry, Reggie. Ugh. Yeah, but, you know, either way, if I'm flayed or something awful happens to me or I'm put to the fire or something, I expect all of you to avenge my death, and he keeps walking. He looks at you as you literally pass him by, like, he just looks slightly offended that you're just taking the lead now. But he seems to swallow that and just keeps walking forward. Y'all didn't tell me one might get burned. Fuck, this just became my kind of party. So, you guys head up to the maintenance entrance. The door is open for you by a short woman who ushers you inside. And there is sort of a little a little setup inside in this sort of like narrow little room that has a bunch of like mops and buckets in it and, and various cleaning supplies. There are two posters that have been sort of made in with poster board and magic marker. The first describes a, a brief list of wristbands and their meaning. Some of them mean that this particular person is fair game, this particular person has been claimed, and there's various rules of etiquette for, you know, people who have brought their own and then people who are available. The other is a diagram of the lobby level with certain rooms, and it looks like a, there's like a path of rooms that have been blocked off that have essentially rooms that have been made private, and they all sort of feed into one another, and eventually they lead to the kitchen, which there's a little word above the kitchen that says, for empties. And the woman just sort of like indicates the two posters and says, do I need to explain anything to you? No, we're good. Then have fun. You make your way out into the lobby proper. This place, you know, it, 
it would probably be very upscale in the daytime when it's serving its normal function as a place for rich people to come into their big rich houses. But now it looks more like a nightclub. The decor has been arranged, lighting has been set up. It's very dark, a lot of strobing lights. There's a fog machine going off somewhere. It's playing sort of Miami style hip hop mixed with EDM music. You know, not not quite trap music as we would know in the, the 2000s, but sort of the precursor to that. And everyone's having fun. The people who have been let in are having a blast. They are clearly substances flowing around the room. And you begin to clock other members of the Sword of Cain who are at this party. Uh, most of them are grouped up in similar groups as yourself, tight-knit groups of dysfunctional families. But there are a couple of lone wolves here and there. How do you guys enter the scene? How do you establish your presence in this party? With an award-winning smile. There is a clip and sort of metallic sound as a lighter comes out, and he lights a cigar, and he just puts it in his mouth. Like, he cut the tip off, lit it, and then he's already starting to smoke inside. And it's one of his few, like, still earthly pleasures that he has. A mortal nearby starts to cough. And he's looking around the room, and he is sizing the room up. He is actively scanning the room and taking everything in so he knows exactly who's who's who and what's what right now. Yeah, you clocked the room. Most of these people are beneath your notice. They're run-of-the-mill packs of the Sabbat. But you do see kind of holding court with a few priests and ducti over near one of the elevators. You see Bishop Sanya. Uh, what about the rest of you? How do you guys establish your presence in this room? I actually do not, and I step behind Leon, and I am holding my hands like a good consigliere. And so I'll step to the side and make an L shape with Leon, so like nobody can see what this dude is wearing. If like anyone else wants to finish up the goose formation, we can like hide our friend. We like we we are embarrassed of you. We just like don't want to be seen with you. <laughs> Sorry. Again, a suit jacket can change an entire look. Dress like you're going to church. Buck kind of looks at you guys, looks at the, the whole trying to hide Reggie thing, rolls his eyes and walks to the bar. You guys keep this up and I'm going to turn my, my own skin into a nice print. Uh, can you turn your skin into something that's not like jorts? I'm not wearing jorts? Are you fucking kidding me? Shut it. Someone keep an eye on Buck. I'm going to go talk to the bishop, all right? To the bar. Mind if I come with you, Leon? Yeah, since Paisley's coming, he looks directly to uh, Layla. Do you want me to watch them? Yes. Okay. Okay, so Layla, Buck, and Reggie head up to the bar while Leon and Paisley head up to the elevator bank. At the bar, there is just... Bottles upon bottles of alcohol. Like, they have really... They, they want these mortals good and sauced. And it is open bar. Drinks are being poured. The bartenders are being weirdly, like, attentive and kind. And, you know, you don't have to struggle... The mortals don't have to struggle to get their attention. It, it is as though, uh, you know, it's it's against the natural order of things. But everyone's loving it. So you guys... You guys, mainly by force majeure, are able to secure yourself a, a place at the bar. You know, uh, something about you guys makes people not want to buddy up. Although lately, you do get a few interested customers sort of hovering at the edge of the, the fuck off field trying to get your eye. Do you want people to like come up, talk? Are you, are you interested in socializing? Oh, God, no. No? Just whatever the job is. Let's just figure it out. I don't like being in places this crowded. Look, Layla, I know... I know what Leon told you, but you ain't got to babysit me. You want to talk to folks, you talk to folks. Buck, dear, it's not babysitting. You're a grown-ass man. I am a grown-ass fucking man. I just need to be able to flag him down. That's all it is. He's not infanta infantilizing you? Is that how you pronounce that? No, he's infantilizing me. Yes, but it's easier to do it with you. Yeah, because I'll pull his kidneys out through his nose and Reggie won't. I would never perform an act of violence against the leader of the pack. That'd be ridiculous. That'd be a ridiculous thing to do. Yeah, especially to, like, say it out loud. That'd be absurd. You'd have to be some sort of brass-bald bitch to do something like that. Right, Buck? 
I am who I am. Okay. Wow. I'm going to go mingle. I want to dance. Um, I like the scene. It's a nice scene. Yeah, you slide out into the crowd. You know, the mortals are surrounding you. Other people come up with you to sort of give you a, a light touch just to sort of let you know you're there, that they're there. And, and you get swallowed up by a crowd. Over at the bar, one of the bartenders, wiry, too tall kind of individual, wearing like a low-hanging hoodie. Looks like he's being acting as a bar back. Just sort of comes up to you guys and says, You guys uh, looking... Looking for anything specific? Like, you mean metaphysically or what? <laughs> he, he leans in a little closer, and you can just sort of see, like, the, the scraggly, like, little too long fang that comes over his, like, sore-covered lips. And he says, uh, no, man, a little bit more visceral. Let you know if I need anything. Tell you what, though, if you can hold on to your, uh, hold on to your horses, we've got something a little special coming in. We got a prison transfer from one of those uh, rich people prisons. Oh, well, the horses will be held then. Yeah, no, they're not going to be going to their fucking resort tonight. Right on, man. Thanks for letting us know. Oh, man, someone with low cholesterol. That'd be nice. You know you don't have to worry about your cholesterol no more, right, Reggie? You don't like trans fats. None of that matters no more, man. But if I want to re-sculpt stuff, it does, though. I have no idea what you're talking about, but it's real fucking gross, and don't ever talk to me about it again, okay? You got it. All right, cool. Paisley and Leon, you guys head over to the elevators where there's kind of a little sitting area arranged. Bishop Sanya is a gaunt man with sort of pale ginger hair. Uh, When he sees the two of you approach, he waves off the person who's talking into his ear and stands and approaches the two of you. And he sort of holds out both of his hands sort of in a very, very old style of like extending the hands of friendship to the both of you. Uh, he'll actually, before he before he goes over there, he takes the cigar out and actually puts it out on like the palm of his hand because he doesn't want to, and then he puts it like back in his pocket. Like he opens up his jacket, puts it in, and then, then he comes over and grasps his hand in a very friendly sort of open gesture. And Paisley, do you accept his hand as well? Oh yes, I'm going to shake his hand in a very gentle manner. He responds to both of you in kind. He says, ah, yes. <sighs> Blood Covenant. Leon. Paisley. Pleasure to see you. Thank you for accepting my invitation. We would be foolish to ignore it. Indeed. It was an honor. Oh, you you have no idea. It was actually not I who requested your presence. There is a VIP in one of the suites above who would like to actually speak to the two of you specifically. Interesting. He does squint like he's he's obviously tabulating some things in his head. Will your fellows be well amongst the uh, the crowd here? For now, I think. We have entertainments coming in soon. If it gets excessive... He sort of smiles and he says, Do not worry about excess. None of the cattle will be going home tonight. So Paisley's just going to smile broadly as if this is amazing. Of course, obviously, if you're not going to let the... Uh, cat out of the bag will just play along. He uh, motions to one of the people who was talking to him. This fine young fellow will lead you up. And the guy goes over, pulls out a key, and like scans something by the elevator button, and presses a button. And it looks like this is the elevator that goes up to the penthouse. He goes in and holds the door open for the both of you. You actually notice, uh, when you pass by him, you notice that his ears have been molded shut. Well, that's interesting. Paisley, who do you think it is? Hmm, I don't know, but if it's anybody higher than the bishop, that could be very interesting. I don't know, it seems like an opportunity. Probably. I mean, I would, if we were in trouble, if we did something wrong, I would, I'm pretty sure I'd know about it. So the elevator goes up, it dings its way up the 17 floors of this particular building until it reaches the penthouse. The door is open. And the first thing the two of you detect is this wall of smell of blood. It is incredibly present in this room, just from the opening of the elevator doors. Uh, you don't see any right now, though. What you see is a incredibly modern 
penthouse suite at the top of this building. It's not the tallest building in Manhattan, not by, not by far, but it has a pretty good view. It looks over the bay. The Twin Towers are a few blocks away, and it is styled in incredibly modern styles. Everything is white with onyx trim. It is immaculately kept. You don't see a speck of blood anywhere, although it is assaulting your nose wherever you go. You hear sort of a crisp voice from deeper in the condominium as the doors open. Are my guests here? Please, come in. I'll walk in first. You head in, and you see this is a very open floor plan sort of place. It's large, wide windows looking out over the city. As you come up closer to the voice, you see a body lying haphazardly uh, across one of the tiles of the kitchen. It's a man huge. You're not sure if they have gigantism or not, but they are bigger than you, Leon. Very muscular, very big. You see sort of the signs of a slit throat with only a few drops of blood around it. Following the voice further, you head into a bedroom where you see another similarly large person, this one time a woman. You think they might be related in somehow? The features are similar, but the size and the same slit throat with just a few drops of blood around. And eventually you find a very large, wide open bathroom that has a simply obscenely large bathtub in it. And that's where the blood is. It's all in there. And a decidedly alien figure is lounging. Two spindly, almost insectoid arms draped over the sides of the tub. This is a tub that could fit all three of you if you wanted to to get on in. They turn slightly and you see the strange, beautiful beautiful but alien figure. This is Sasha Vykos, Priestky of the Sabbat. May I join you? Business before pleasure, Sister Paisley. Uh, he doesn't like take a knee or anything like that, Chivalrous do, but he does like look down. Like he can't, he's not supposed to look directly at this person. Yeah, I'm just going to, I apologize and like put head down. No need, no need. The blood is all of our addiction, all of our temptation. And I wouldn't want any of this to go to waste. But, and she moves herself around the tub so that she's more facing you, so that you can see them fully. And the alienness and the beauty is still apparent. Their skin is a uniform bruise purple, and there's just these ridges of bone that come out. You see the edge of their slight breasts as they dip into the blood. And their head has this crest-like ridge bone formation. And she regards the two of you and says, I have heard of your pack. I have heard of your deeds, your liberation of the uh, snake's den, and what you got from there. I'm very impressed. We are honored that you would say that. We worked hard. Yes, thank you. So it is not... Your strength that I have brought you to discuss. I've heard enough of that. What I need to know from the two of you, those who hold responsibility in your pack, I need to know of your weakness. Thank you for listening to this week's chapter of Blood Covenant, a V5 Sabbat story, presented by Simulacra Studios. Simulacra Studios is an entirely listener-supported podcast. If you'd like to support the show, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash simulacrastudios. Patrons can listen to the entirety of Season 1 right now. In addition to gaining access to our private Discord server, where you can chat with the cast and crew of all Simulacra Studios productions. Again, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.